Hi everyone, welcome and thanks for tuning in. Let's jump right in, go into the geometry nodes, rename your object, hit new, disconnect the input from the output and let's get started. So first we need the grid and then connect that and then we will instance something on the points of that grid. So put the instance and points node. You can add the set material node already and then let's uh, cramp up the resolution of the grid and you can put the value node and then actually connect both uh, inputs there and put the value quite high but something that your computer can cope with and then let's instance in cylinder let's opt for a hexagon and just reduce uh, the size of it what we can do is actually connect the value as well there into the radius and then play with the math node to find something that is quite neat and even depending on the resolution of your grid. So next we'll play with the scale and we need a color ramp, an image texture node and a position node. So. Uh, the color ramp will be connected to the image texture and uh, in the image texture you can just um, hit open and select the footage of your choice, the video of your choice and then connect the image texture to the position node. So hit open, select your video and Blender will load it in. There you go. And we can see that it's not perfectly aligned, but uh, first hit extend in the drop down menu so that it extends over the whole of your grid. Um, and then we will play with the position a little bit so that it's uh, fully centered, but we can see that when we scroll through the frames, it works. So add a vector math node and uh, play with the X and Y to position it properly to so that it's neatly centered. You can also add a second vector mouse node so that you find the position that works for your video. So this seems okay and now just go back to frame one and keyframe that in your timeline on the duration of your choice. I tend to choose sometimes the duration of the actual video in terms of frames but uh, it's really up to you. Choose your render engine, I'll go with cycles and I like to have the background really pitch black so that the texture really sticks out. And let's set the material. You can just uh, use the shader of your liking. I kind of like complementary colors with a little bit of subsurface. I think it looks quite cool but really it's really as you wish and depending on your artistic affinities so yeah so this is for the hexagons uh, the cylinders next we will be doing the plexus effect and uh, the plexus effect well we will be just reusing the same node tree with a few tweaks we will move a few nodes around and change a few. So let's do that. So first um, we can just delete the cylinder node and add a UV sphere. And 
and don't forget to connect uh, the mouth node again and here we have little spheres uh, animated by our video texture and um, next just before the set material node you can add a set shade smooth to kind of smooth them out and then let's add a few more nodes add a join geometry node and then from the grid connect it to a triangulate mesh node and then go for a mesh to curve and curve to mesh and connect that to the join geometry and now we have the connections between those points so we are getting somewhere so next we need to give a profile to the curve so look for a curve circle and then connect the divide math node from the grid to the radius and then just make a little bit of room because then we will just add an extra node on that connection which will be a duplicate of that divide node and then you can just play with the values to uh, set the radius of those curves to something that is visible but quite fine because we don't want it to get in the way of the actual picture and the little spheres. Let's look a little bit closer and if we hit play you can see that the spheres change scale so that's still working. So next add a position node and align your to vector. Um, this part uh, took a bit of experimenting actually to uh, figure it out. So after the join geometry, search for a set position node and connect it there. And then we will connect our image texture to combine XYZ with a map range node and connect that into position and then we just need to combine that with the position of the points of the grid so we get something like this um, the map range node gives you the amplitude uh, basically how high or how big you want the animation to be in terms of offsetting the position you can as well play with the scale and play with it with the color ramp but then it would seem that this align unit to vector node doesn't really do much so we can just disconnect it and keep the position straight into rotation and here actually we can do without the map range node even though I always have the habit of using it so um, I can just duplicate the vector math node switch it to divide and now we have those points those spheres the whole animation nicely vertical and not on a tilt anymore so then play with the different values on those math nodes and vector math nodes to find something that works and that it's kind of neatly organized and plays nicely throughout the whole animation but uh, yes that's kind of it really So let's reorganize these nodes a little bit so that you can have the full picture 
that you can keep as a screenshot or write it down or take a picture of it. So here you go, I hope you had some fun and uh, thanks a lot for watching, it's really appreciated. Take care.